But the Harris government cut welfare rates by more than 21 percent, which still left them 10 percent over the average of the other provinces in Canada. None of the governments subsequent to the Harris government raised the welfare rates back to what they originally were. What do you infer from that? Well, Sandra was the minister at, 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 charged with trying to raise those rates right after. So remember, Sandra, the computer system that you inherited from the Tories didn't didn't allow for a welfare uh, raise. Oh, ben, and it was a yeah, huge, ben, see, huge I'm, issue. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you, but I can tell you that we had to spend $10 million just on an IT system to allow to change the rate. And that's frankly why we weren't able to change the rate instantly. And it took us at least that first year before we could start to move that rate forward. But we did move it forward, albeit it did not go back to the levels that it was. Yeah, and, but Steve makes a good point. And, and I think that was one of the great themes of, of Alistair's book, of the essays in Alistair's book, is that I, I don't know if it's toothpaste comes out of the tube or also governments, I mean, when Dalton McGinty came in, there were some things that he could have done that he didn't do and I think he didn't do them because he thought it wasn't worth the hassle. And he figures the pain has already been inflicted. Mm -hmm. Harris has absorbed the political damage. The liberals can then benefit from, you know, if, they, if there was a benefit. And I think there was some, I mean, it's things that, that McGinty did that, that, that uh, Ford hasn't undone. We have full day kindergarten still. Ford didn't undo that. We have the HST still. Ford didn't deharmonize the sales they're, tax. They're not building new coal plants in the province. No one's building new coal plants. <laughs> uh, the, and, now, and, and Harris, and it's in the book, uh, the, the, the first coal plant was actually started closing under Mike Harris mm -hmm. in Nanico, uh, right. in uh, Lake, Lakeview, which is now Mississauga. Course, uh, Mississauga, and poor credit. Yeah. Um, but so I think there's a lot of, I mean, there's almost like a continuum of government in, in this province. Uh, I mean, there was some things that, that, yes, that Maryland's government did that Harris undid, but they got elected to undo those things. Okay, Marilyn, you want well, to raise something else? Yeah, I do. And I, I think what was missing from the book, and I recognize that, that it was a book to, in my view, perhaps rehabilitate Mike Harris a bit. But what was missing, and, and this is really important, and Chloe, you touched on it, is that some of the policies around, for instance, stopping building social housing, and in fact, not building it, but stopping about 17,000 units that were already in process or almost in, pro in process, and downloading social housing to the city of Toronto and downloading other things, knowing that the city couldn't, all they could do is raise taxes, no other way to raise money without provincial consent. Um, the Safe Streets Act, the cutting the welfare, if you combine all of these and making it easier, rent control you brought up, so I won't go in it, into it again, but if you put all of those in a package and they're not identified in the book as real problems that exist today, and I think I can argue that, you know, these cuts against mostly poor people has contributed to our housing crisis and our homelessness crisis today. Let me get Alistair on that. There's no question you guys gutted social housing development, right? Correct. And the impact of which uh, is feeling is being felt today, and, do you and agree? And flagged uh, by Ginny Roth in, in her chapter around municipal reform very explicitly. So that, was it yeah. a mistake to kill those programs? I don't know that it was a mistake at the time. We now face a, a series of issues that new governments, like there's never no issues. Uh, and so there's always going to be things to fix in any system. And Chloe's given a pretty good list of them. Uh, and I think the reality is that every new government is accountable for the facts as they inherit them. And some of them will have been caused by errors before. Some of them will just be the way the world's unfolding. Uh, and so this book what isn't about prescribing the solutions to the social housing and homelessness issues we face today. Those are complicated and multi-government uh, multi-generational issues. Uh, so, yes, they should be fixed. 